Welcome to the Plato Lounge, where we just chill. Then, not paying attention. it was over. With the Archdemon dead, the Darkspawn Horde quickly crumbled. Most fled back into the deep roads. They would remain a threat in the years to come. But the blight had been ended before it had truly begun. Elden had been saved, and the entire kingdom rose up to joyously greet its queen. Grey Warden stood redeemed, and a new age had begun. But at what cost? My friends, we are gathered to celebrate those responsible for our victory. Of those who stood against the Darkspawn siege of Denerim, there is one in particular who deserves commendation. The one who led the charge against the Archdemon and killed it remains with us still. An inspiration to all he saved that day. Ladies and gentlemen, may I formally present my betrothed who shall soon be your king. Grey Warden, it is hard to imagine how you could have aided Ferelden more. I think it only appropriate that I return the favor. As a reward and as an engagement present, I offer you a boon of your choice. Thank you, my queen. I only ask that the house pay for what they did to my family. Let it be known that the Howes are hereby stripped of their titles and fortune, and will be investigated as to their individual involvement in the High Ever attack. High Ever itself is restored to your family, namely your brother Fergus, who was found safe and sound near the Kokari Wilds. Let it also be known that the Arling of Amaranthine, once the land of Arl Howe, is now granted to the Grey Wardens. There they can rebuild following the example of those who went before them. What are your plans? Will you remain with the Grey Wardens? Well, we just stopped the Blight, so it bought me a little bit of time because I need to stay with you side by side as I think you'll need my help. You are no doubt correct. Having you near at hand would be a great relief. There is a group of eager Ferelden citizens waiting outside to get a look at their hero. I suggest you make at least a brief appearance before they storm the gate. <laughs> Just tell the guard at the door when you are ready. So, wow, it's nice. Look at this huge amount of people. <laughs> but for a game this old, it's truly really beautiful. Anywho, I guess we should speak to my soon-to-be wife first. Nora. Allow me to offer you my personal congratulations, Warden. I must admit that while I did not share my father's pessimism regarding the Grey Wardens, I had my doubts that such a small number of you could be victorious. Yet here you are. <laughs> Damn right. I mean, me personally, I had no doubts whatsoever. <laughs> Normally, I would call that bravado, but it seems your confidence is deserved. At any rate, I understand the preparations are underway for our wedding. It will only be a matter of weeks. Are you nervous? <laughs> nervous? Of what? It's not like you're a, a huge archdemon in disguise, right? <laughs> I suppose compared to killing monsters, the acquiring of a wife is a mundane matter. We will need to speak more of the role you wish to play. As the hero of Ferelden, there are many opportunities, but that can wait. For now, enjoy the celebration. We can speak further when the day is done. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty, who should we talk to? Uh, Legane, I don't want to talk to Legane, let's just talk to Shell. Uh, but Legane is my father-in-law now, or soon to be. Alright. So it appears that Riordan was wrong. I find it difficult to believe that he deliberately misled us. Have you another explanation for what happened? 
Yes, Morgan helped me with her magic. I should have known. A witch disappeared not long after the battle and has not been seen since. I assume this was expected. Still, the Orlesian Grey Wardens have been persistent in their questions. I intend to keep any thoughts on the matter to myself. I understand you will be remaining here. I've been tapped to lead up the Grey Warden recruitment efforts here in Ferelden. Anora's influence, no doubt. I suspect you're not prepared for what it means to be married to my daughter. Nah, it'll be fine. I am not, Kaelin. Indeed not. Let us put an end to the chatter here. I'm sure neither of us has the stomach for it. Go and return to your celebration. Regardless of what I might think, you ended the blight. You deserve your accolades. Alrighty, Shahel, what's up? So it survived after all. My impression that all creatures made of flesh were hopelessly squishy was, uh, premature. <laughs> it's nice to be appreciated. It has made me revise my opinion of its kind, my kind. I am, or at least was, a dwarf. A creature of flesh. I have to keep reminding myself that. In fact, I think I may even try to become one again. Wait, what? Wynne has offered to accompany me to Tevinter to speak with the mages there. The Circle of Minrathrus has the largest collection of arcane knowledge in Thedas. If it is possible to reverse this process, then the knowledge to do so will be there, or that is my hope. And if not, then I will keep looking. I have nothing if not time, yes. What? Wait, when did you guys discuss this? How come I didn't know? Man, a trip to Deventer, that sounds pretty fun. I'm, I'm, I want to go, but uh, yeah, you do have plenty of time. No arguments there. I intend to return eventually, unless I finally decide to destroy all pigeons everywhere. That may take a while, but otherwise I will come back. If it happens to one day see a tiny little dwarf who appears very nervous of being squished, that will be me. Until then, I wish it well. It, you, have been a fine friend. And you've been a fine friend too, Shell. And when you do come back, we will start a campaign and we will take out every pigeon in the world. <laughs> Oh, Eamon. It is over. I can barely believe it. You stopped the civil war and then defeated the Blight. On behalf of Ferelden, allow me to say thank you. It truly cannot be said enough. Well, I'm a Grey Warden, and that's what we do. <laughs> so I'm learning. It's good that you're staying here in the capital. The hero of Ferelden will have influence, and there is much to be done. Myself, I will be returning to Redcliffe. There is much to rebuild there. And Honora certainly has no need of me. Connor seems well enough, but Isolde, she does not wish to go back. I may yet leave the land to Tegan, in fact. I cannot thank you enough for saving them. They are the joy of my existence. But here I am rambling on. I shall let you get back to your celebration, Warden. Enjoy it while you can. No problem, man. Thank you. And uh, you might want to keep an eye on your brother and your wife. Uh, just FYI. Fergus, Fergie Ferg, what's up, dude? When I heard that my little brother was not only a Grey Warden, but also leading Ferelden into battle, I was surprised, to put it mildly. Father, he would have been so proud of you. I know I am. You've done good. Man, what happened to you, Fergus? Wh 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 where did you end up? How are you here? I never made it to the Battle of Ostagar. We were still scouting in the wilds when we were attacked by a party of Darkspawn. Most of my men were killed. I woke up two weeks later in a chastened hut, wounded and feverish. By the time I was able to sneak out of the wilds, you were already marching to Denerim. I tried to get word to High Ever. You can imagine what happened, I suppose. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Dude, but I'm so sorry about Orin and Oriana. Yes, I'm trying not to think too much about them. Hal has lost everything, that bastard. Vengeance is bitter, but I think about Oren. It barely seems like it's enough. At least Amaranthine now belongs to the Grey Wardens. 
There's some justice in that, I think. I need to go back to High Ever. See if I can clean up the mess Hal made of it. I will see you soon, I hope. Yeah, at the wedding for certain. My little brother, marrying the Queen. All I can think is what Mother would have said about that. Take care of yourself, you hear? Or I'll find you and nag you like Mother did until you're ready to tear out your hair. <laughs> Lady Anna, I will miss your songs. So here we are. The conquering hero has won the day, and now he takes his bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. But of course, and the lovely Lady Anna spins onto the stage to take her bow with me. And my part was small. I'm happy to watch you receive the accolades. It's quite fun. You know, I can't help now but think of my vision. Whether it was the Maker sending me to you or whatever, it was a good thing. I thought I was supposed to save you, to show you the way. But it seems it was meant to be the other way around. Odd how that works, no? I don't think it was the Maker, to be honest. We were two comrades that turned to two friends that watched each other's backs. I know. It's just very dramatic. I have to remember to write it down. I've been offered a position to head up an investigation into the Darkspawn. It's quite exciting, really. <laughs> what? Wow, it seems like our paths will be crossing very soon, then. Congratulations. I'm organizing a royal expedition into one of the deep roads and leave a month from now. It will be a grand adventure of my very own. I'm looking forward to it. At any rate, you should get back to the celebration. We can speak another time. Sounds like a plan. Zevi, what up? I will be relieved when all this pomp and ceremony is done. Such events are perfect opportunities for assassins, after all. I can't help but expect the crows to appear at any moment, which would be a welcome break, mind you. <laughs> a bloodbath? What a fantastic idea. You see? This is why I like you. Always game for a little fun. You know, it does occur to me that staying in one place is only going to invite the crows to find me that much quicker. While fun, that might eventually get complicated. You said earlier that you are planning on remaining here. Is that true? It is. Hmm. And if I said I was thinking of moving on, seeing the sights, uh, meeting new people and killing a few? <laughs> Dude, you're welcome to stay. And if the crows come, I got your back. Then let the crows bring it on. I can mock them while you crush their skulls. It's the sort of thing that made us friends, after all. Brings a tear to the eye, really. Well then, since I am sticking around, I suppose we'll have plenty of time to speak later, yes? So go on and get paraded about. It's fun to watch. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on you and make sure no one gets a clear shot. Not without paying me a great deal of coin, anyhow. <laughs> well, I feel safe already. win the hero of Ferelden. my my how does it feel <laughs> it's still a little strange to be honest of that i have no doubt it's a title you'll be wearing for a long time to come just as Loghain wore his but it's not so bad is it a blight defeated with the other nations barely becoming aware who could ask for better yeah but we did it all together it wasn't just me I don't think many heroes ever do. I'm glad not to be on the receiving end of all this attention myself. I say, let the young have their fame. Not that I've gone without notice. Irving asked me to take over as first enchanter, but I don't wish to go back. Not after all this. Instead, I've decided to travel. Shale has expressed a desire to go to Devinter to look into a way to regain her mortality. and. Uh, I will join her. Yeah, she told me about that. Man, I, I envy you guys. It sounds like fun. I hope you have a grand adventure. I understand you are remaining in Denerim, so we will likely see each other a great deal. I look forward to it. For now, I imagine the hero of Ferelden still has much to do. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Catch you later. And look at Agrin over there. Of course he's by the alcohol. 
Never change, Ogryn. Never change. I mean, you could, but it's okay. Humans have a better taste for spirits than I thought. <laughs> the ale up here is actually good. Horse of our ale tastes like dirt in comparison. Probably because they put dirt in it. <laughs> Go figure. So, are you going back to Ozimar? I don't know. Maybe eventually. I got offered a spot in the human army. And not as a mascot either. You know, these humans aren't bad for all their long legs. So, you're done adventuring? Maybe. For a bit. Talk to me in a year or so when I'm bored and maybe I'll think differently. And since we're more or less done adventuring for now, I just wanted to say... You're all right for a human. And you're all right for a dwarf. <laughs> yes. I don't come by by friends very often. I'm glad to call you one, Warden. Thank you. I gotta say what's up to Ralph really fast. What up, dude? Uh -huh. I am not Ralph leaves himself like on an inconspicuous longer. area nearby. Uh, come on, Ralph. I thought I trained you better than that. That. He rolls around happily on his back. Stan. What up? It is good to see you again, Kadam. These people, they call you hero. It is a strange word. But I think I understand its meaning. The Arishak on occasion has declared a Kunari to be Kunoran Vel, one who serves as an example to others. Such examples are always made after their death, however, a death in service to the Kun. A living Kunoran Vel would be too proud. Ah, well, nothing wrong with a little pride. I would argue, had you not ended a blight, for such an accomplishment there may be allowances. What the human custom has in common with our own is that the declaration of a Kunoran Vale is a cause for much celebration. It is one of few occasions when the Kunari are permitted to engage in revelry. There is imbibing of spirits, public chanting, meditations abandoned. It is madness. <laughs> that sounds epic, man. <laughs> Hopefully you're not just standing in the corner sulking. But uh, man, I would love to see that. But man, Stan, do you ever smile? Can I can I get one smile? Is that is that cool? I am smiling. I suppose I should tell you. I have decided to return to my people. Your quest is done, and thus so is my reason for accompanying you. And I was just starting to get used to you. And I to you, strangely enough. It must be said. You found my sword and gave me a chance to restore my honor. I owe you a great debt. Man, you helped me as well, Stan. It's been good, and I really will miss you. It has. That one of the Baz, a foreigner, would become known as Kadan to me. Unthinkable. Yet here it is. Perhaps I shall see you again one day. Until then, may you always find the path you seek. Farewell, Kadan. And farewell to you, Stan. I really do hope we cross paths again. Alrighty. Are you ready, my lord? The crowds outside are getting restless. Yeah, man. Let's kick the ties and light the fires. Right. I'll take you there now. Follow me. Zelik married Queen Enora in a lavish ceremony six months after her coronation, becoming the prince consort of Ferelden. Many said that if the two did not end up vying for control of the throne, they would usher in a new golden age not seen since King Kalanhad first united the barbarian tribes. News that, the urn sacred, news that the urn of sacred ashes had been found in Froden did not spread outside the Chantry until Brother Genitivi made an announcement several months after the defeat of the Darkspawn. The manuscript detailing his research and his experience with Andraste's cult grew huge interest among scholars throughout Thetis. Some years later, the Chantry announced that the resting place of Andraste's ashes had indeed been found. A ripple of excitement spread among the pious people of Thedas, with many undertaking pilgrimages to see the ashes or partake of their healing powers. Following months of effort, the Tower of the Circle of Magi was finally cleansed of the last spirits to slip through the veil. No further abominations were created, and First Enchanter Irving was pleased to declare the circle safe. 
all that could be saved had been. With the slavers shut down in the alien age, the lot of the city born elves improved for a time. A few shortage years later forced Queen Inora to come down hard on elven rioters, and acts not quietly forget. Ha! <laughs> With the slavers shut down in the alien age, the lots of the city-born elves improved for a time. A food shortage years later forced Queen Anora to come down hard on the elven rioters, an act not quickly forgotten and a sign that tensions between the elves and humans were far from resolved. Shiani continued to be an outspoken member of the alien age community, and in time became the new elder. The outspokenness earned her frequent trouble but served her people well. Arl Eamon returned to Redcliffe, beginning a long task of rebuilding. He found the village already bustling and eager to leave behind the memories of those terrible nights facing the undead. Connor was sent off to study at the Circle, and considering his earlier experience, he excelled in his training and easily passed the harrowing to become a full mage. At his father's urging, Connor accepted a position in Tevinter to undertake formal study of the Fade. The Dalish Elves prospered after the Siege of Denerim. Having earned much respect for their part in the battle, for once, human lands welcomed the wandering folk. The new keeper, Lanaya, was respected both amongst the Dalish as well as in the Ferelden court. She was a voice of reason, and other Dalish clans would turn to her to help resolve disputes with human folk. As for the werewolves, now freed from their curse, they remained together and took their surname Wolf in memory of what they once were. They eventually became the most successful animal trainers in Thedas, and each year would gather to light a candle in memory of the lady who had loved them so well. In Osmor, King Balin quickly proved himself a reformer. Traded with the surface lands increased and caste restrictions were loosened. The caste lists were permitted to take arms against the Darkspawn in exchange for new freedoms. For the first time in generations, the line in the Deep Roads was pushed back and few thighs were reclaimed. Balin's reforms quickly found them enemies with the Nevoirs and noble castes. However, after several assassination attempts, the assembly was dissolved. The king then ruled alone, some said as a tyrant, others said as a visionary determined to drag Osmor into the modern world. The dwarven mage, Dagna, ultimately completed her studies at the rebuilt circle tower on the surface. Eventually, she published a comprehensive theory of how Lyrian vapors relate to supply of magic. It gained a great deal of attention. This inspired mages from other parts of Thetis to establish a new circle of magi in Osmar itself, one that they had ready access to Dwarven Lyrium, and lies outside the Chantry's power completely. The willingness of Osmar to harbor Apostase sparked outrage that began whispers that the Divine was contemplating a new exalted march. Although the Anvil of the Void was destroyed, rumors about its location crept into Osmar. Years later, thanks to the defeat of the Darkspawn on the surface, a few determined smiths managed to locate Anvil's remains. They examined the ruins of Anvil, and upon returning to Osmar with their findings, convinced the Shaper to attempt to recreate Keridan's research. A new golem was created, bound with the spirit taken from the Fade. The golem immediately went insane, killing several Shapers before it was destroyed. The research was branded excessively dangerous and sealed away. Whispers of its existence circulated throughout Osmar, however, and demand among the smith cast to reopen Karen's research refused to abate. As good as her ward, Morgan disappeared once the Archdemon was slain. Someone of Morgan's descriptions was, sent, was seen traveling along months later, heading west through the Frostback Mountains, and she may even have been with child. The ring that Morgan gave Zelik remained in his possession. She had once claimed that it formed a connection between the two, and there came a night when he was sure that she was thinking of him, somewhere. She felt regret and sorrow, but the ring told no more. There was no word of her after that. With Flemeth dead, or at least gone, the chances of tracking her down were slim indeed. One cannot help but wonder, however, what became of the child? What were Morgan's plans? These questions must remain the mystery f for now. The companions who had traveled with Zelik eventually scattered to the four winds, drawn either by personal duty or by the call to further adventure. The hero remained in Dinnerum, a celebrity amongst the commoners and a fixture at court, at least for a time. As the Blighted Lands began to heal and the Grey Warden slowly rebuilt the Order of uh, Marathine, they discovered that the fight against the Darkspawn was not yet complete. Although the Horde was routed and had dissolved upon the Archdemon's death, Many of the powerful Darkspawn survived to organize roving warbands that preyed both upon the land and upon each other. These warbands spread havoc, and some even journeyed west into Orlay or across the Walking Sea by the Deep Roads. They proved incredibly difficult to wipe out. But these are tales yet to be told. 
This tale ended with Zelix sank his blade in the Archdemon's head and destroyed it forever. It was not the last. <laughs> but these are tales yet to be told. This tale ended when Zelix sank his blade in the Archdemon's head and destroyed it forever. It was not the last that Ferelden would hear of him. However, Well, thank you so much for watching the Let's Play of Dragon Age Origins. Um, I will eventually, like once I finish all of the Dragon Ages, do like a, a comparison or like some type of review about maybe like which is best between all of them or putting them maybe in an order, like a tier list or something like that. So I haven't decided yet, but it was fun revisiting the game, um, starting a new kind of seeing different little details that I've forgotten about over the years, because it's been a long time since this game originally came out, but um, it was a fun experience all in all. I think um, I'm looking forward to starting Awakening. That should be pretty fun. And I'll continue our journey of our Grey Warden. So that'll be fun to see how that continues and see what new um, Darkspawn issues uh, will happen. I got a little distracted by that concept art because uh, we'll be seeing that character in uh, Dragon Age Awakening. But um, yeah, let's see. There's a couple other thoughts. Oh, the ending slides. Basically, those are not um, canon <laughs> anymore because when they originally made Dragon Age Origins, they thought it'd be a standalone game. They weren't expecting to do any sequels. And since then, of course, they had Awakening, which is an expansion. Then they had Dragon Age 2, which was a full on uh, new game. And then, of course, Dragon Age Inquisition as well as all the DLC that came with it. And all of the DLC isn't just like typical DLC, it's like really story-driven DLC. So um, yeah, so those ending slides, they're kind of cool, but those are mainly just hearsay, it's all fiction. Some of them are actually still relevant, some of them, some of them are not. But uh, yeah, I look forward to going through uh, Awakening and then getting to Dragon Age 2, and then finally ending with Inquisition. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure.